recently, it's gone beyond belief. I've had people on my truck roof, I've had people on my trail roof. Okay, so we've just gone down uh, a track towards the migrant camp just outside of Dunkirk, uh, speaking to one or two of the migrants there. It's a terrifying place to be. And this is the worst I've ever seen it. The economy um, right now is suffering immensely. As the UK finds itself accepting more and more migrants from all over the world, we are now facing a situation where British businesses are at risk and to some extent lives are being put in danger. With free movement within the EU, migrants are making their way through the countries of Europe and heading for the UK. Our relatively short distance between mainland Europe and Dover, combined with the thought of living in Britain with the potential to receive benefits and be housed, makes the UK the final destination for the majority of these migrants. How long have you been here? Uh, actually, I'm here about a month. A month? Yeah, oh. and there's uh, people about three months, two yeah. months. What would you do if the French let you stay here and let you have a house, gave you a French passport? Yeah, I know, but you know, sometimes they don't give a camp somewhere to live in, you know? Yeah. That's why they, many people, they don't stay here. They don't stay here, but if they go to England, yeah, they can get a house. England. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. We've, over the last few weeks, been following the story in Calais uh, and we believe the story's now moved on because we've, we're in Tessigam, uh, just outside of Dunkirk, where we uh, suspect there's a camp uh, and we're going to go see this camp and see, uh, we've already met some of the migrants and we, we suspect that they are moving along the coast now and hitting all of the smaller ports where there's no security. Very difficult is, is living here. Yeah. Can we see? Yes. Can you show us? Four months is here. You've been four months yes. here? Four months. Goodness me. Yeah. Where do you come from? Have you been have you, Syria. Syria? Yes. Syria, yeah. Okay, I'm going to take it. Do you want to borrow a lighter? Is there water? Is that where you're living? I'm not speaking English. You come here and me. Okay. You come here and me. We just want to talk to you. We don't need the people. We need to go to England. Okay. That's our problem. Okay, this no, we're just... our problem. Every day you can lose the people. Sorry, I just want to find out. We are not cinema. Can you go out, please? Okay, fine. Get the fuck out from our land. Come on in, back out. It was quite evident that a proportion of the migrants did not want to be seen on camera. We later discovered that there was a criminal element in force here, where certain migrants were paying traffickers to get them across the border. British vehicles were also involved here, which in turn creates questions regarding British criminal involvement. We're now in the centre of Dunkirk, the chase is out of that camp and chases back up the road. We're now in the centre of Dunkirk, where we've just reported that to a, a gendarme who was unbelievably told us he can't do anything about it because he's a gendarme in Calais and not a gendarme in Dunkirk and has asked us to ring his head office to report the, the, uh, the incident. You couldn't get any crazier than this place. What's striking when you travel around the coastal areas is that camps such as these are emerging amongst normal society. When the heat becomes too much and the media get wind of proceedings, the problem simply shifts to another area 
as we found out when we revisited the camp the next day. I don't fight against uh, migrants, you know, yeah. immigrants are a poor guy. I try to fight against smugglers. This is the only blockade. one solution, yeah. a blocus yeah. in the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. When, when they go out, when they arrive in Europe, it's too late. Too late for the French, too late for the Greek, too late for English. So, you know, I, I so don't... So saying exactly what I've said, it needs to be stopped at the Mediterranean yeah. and turned back is what I've been saying. As we've heard from the Mayor of Tetigem, there is only one solution to stopping the migrants from flooding Europe, and that is to tackle the problem at the Mediterranean Sea. For British industry to function normally, this simply cannot continue. Migrants are finding a way to get through, and simply not enough is being done to stop thousands entering the UK. The situation has obviously worsened yeah. over the past 8 to 12 months, yeah. and Eurotunnel are doing their utmost yeah. uh, to, to help the drivers with the security. Mm -hmm. They've recently built a new compound, so there's less traffic queuing on the motorway. And the drivers are now inside the compound queuing up, but during the busy periods, that's when the migrant activity is at its worst. And that's when they're jumping on the bandwagon and getting in the back of the trailers. Mm -hmm. We've had several drivers that uh, have said they've been in fear of their lives. Right. And uh, the sort of best analogy that I can put to it is that one particular driver, he said he felt as if he was running the gauntlet. Wow. It just said, it is not a nice place to be. He said, he, he rang me and he said, Vaughan, I'm literally shaking. Yeah. He said, I shouldn't be in fear no. going to work. No. And nobody should be in fear going to work. <clears throat> for me, I need protection here. We're British citizens bringing goods for British people and there's nobody here protecting those drivers whatsoever. Nobody. The government should get their act together because it's seriously affecting trade. There should not be any problems for trade. We should be allowed to trade, no problems at all, because it's affecting both countries, not just England, it's affecting France and further afield. But it's costing the economy, it must be costing a fortune. The economy um, right now is suffering immensely due to the issues of um, produce that has been contaminated. When somebody enters the back of a truck, they lose that. Um, we also have, at the moment, the trucks are on time-sensitive goods. They're trying to get things through. The knock-on effect to businesses, a lot of businesses are waiting for the produce to arrive into the, their stores. They, they're having problems. And at the end of the day, the consumer's the one that actually suffers, and so does this, the industry. us to say that they need help. Uh, the biggest problem we've got at the moment is the drivers themselves. Um, we've already got a depleting uh, employment status of drivers coming along. With the average wage of an Eastern European driver being around £7,000 per annum, we've got British agencies now offering to double that amount and still undercutting our British drivers. We used to have over 700,000 drivers. Uh, with the CPC coming in, we've already lost 200,000. We're struggling to encourage young drivers to come on board. At the moment, it's only about 2% of under 25s coming in to the haulage industry. That is disgusting. I mean, we really need to look at this and get it resolved. But who wants to sit in a truck for hours on end, feel that they're being threatened by sitting in these trucks, uh, and it's just not an enjoyable job anymore, uh, and we need to resolve it. With many potential routes through to the UK, migrants are taking life-threatening risks for the opportunity to reach British shores. Although millions of pounds has been put into security around certain areas, there are many ports where the security is minimal. OK, so now we've come to uh, the DFDS ferry terminal, as you can see down that end, uh, uh, open fields, no fencing. We can see the sheds there where they're going through to test uh, radar and CO2 if there's any migrants in the back of the vehicles but you can see there's no fencing whatsoever and there's no security there's no patrols there's no sniffer dogs this is an ideal area now for the migrants to come in and they are switching on to this now that Calais is such a difficult area to get into that they're now coming into these smaller ports such as this and we can see to the front of me here where we have all of the uh, all of the vehicles lining up now waiting to get onto the ferry port 
Even though the French police are showing a presence in many areas, the migrants are simply being moved and released and the problems remain. Even areas where the security is present, the migrants are finding a way through. We're down at the uh, a fence that we'd visited earlier, uh, on one of our earlier visits, where we'd found a breach in the fence. Uh, and you can see here, uh, this is where this fence had been cut away. And you can see where it's been stitched back up now, uh, been repaired. But if you can see through there, there's a gate across there, which will be easily climbed over. Once you're over that, that is the track that you're aiming to get on. Uh, terminal building across there in the distance but this is the track that will lead you directly into the tunnel so that's all i've got to do throw that fence there over that gate and then they're onto the track very easy very quick as we've seen tonight we've just been down to the uh, to the jungle the so-called jungle uh, and that in the two weeks since I've been coming here, that jungle has increased uh, quite substantially. So there's more migrants coming into the area and they are going to keep coming and they're going to keep trying to get onto this track. We've, uh, we've travelled right across the area now over the last fortnight. It's our third trip and uh, this will be our final trip. And we've seen how the, the migrants camp uh, on, down at Calais has increased significantly. There is more people here now uh, and, and we have seen that over, the, over that fortnight period. We've seen the uh, police presence increase and we've now seen uh, French troops down at the tunnel ahead. So yes, everything's been increased, the security's been increased, but as I keep saying, this will not stop the problem. The knock-on effect of the migrants reaching the UK can be seen nationwide, as various cities struggle to deal with the increase in population, but also the lack of communication to local residents. Well, the residents raise concerns mostly about the potential rise in, or a fear of a potential rise in crime. Uh, and anecdotally, we heard of complaints from residents of the hotel um, who were just intimidated by the presence of asylum seekers and unhappy with staying here. Well the council have certainly made statements publicly in the council chamber which are available for all to see on video but I don't believe that they've actually made any genuinely, a genuine effort to publicise this fact. As UK's migration spokesman we've campaigned hard to show the large increase in legal migration into the United Kingdom from Europe. Illegal migration and asylum is compounding an already massive problem. We know from the United Nations that there are approximately a million people who are wanting to come into Europe from the coasts of Libya all the way up to Turkey. We're a small nation. We cannot cope with the large numbers that are expected to come into Europe. The EU Schengen Agreement is a farce because it makes the whole of Europe completely porous. You can move from Italy all the way up to Sweden without ever having to show your passport. And as a consequence, migrants from all over the world who manage to get into Europe can get to any country, as we can see in Germany and Sweden, and, and the problems that we're seeing in Calais as they make their way over to the United Kingdom. Well, here we are in the European Parliament, uh, and it's my belief that the, the tragedies that we're seeing now with this young child drowned on the beach and with thousands of people trying to get into the EU is basically the fault of the EU and its open borders. Whilst we have these open borders, we will see more and more of these scenes of tragedy uh, and we will see more traffickers making millions of pounds off the back of this, this sickening trade. 
I, I still think that if it isn't sorted, there'll be some fatality before the job's done. And I think that'll be the only time when the government decides to say, well, it's, it is serious. If we need to bring in extra, extra service people for a border force, then we must do that to make sure that we've got the right safety measures in place for small businesses so that these guys who work very, very hard can actually continue to run their business and keep the economy of the country going. Well look, if you look at the situation in Calais, we have a, an absolutely hopeless government that hasn't got a clue how to solve the problem. So let alone solve the, the, the massive unemployment problem we have in, in this country. We make it absolutely clear, anyone who's involved in people trafficking, who happens to be an on-UK citizen, would have their passports removed. We think there should be stronger sentences for those involved in people trafficking. You know, we are all sensitive to the situation, and we know these people are desperate, but at the same point, you've got to have protection for people that are doing things legally.